All right, welcome to the May 20th uh, non credit Working Group meeting um, 2024. Um, did an informal survey over the past week of a bunch of communities, and so I'm going to be sharing that along with um, comments from Richard about what DOC is doing, and so those are the main topics on the agenda. Um, we are recording, and I'll post it afterwards for those that want to listen in after. Um, Reminder, this is a Linux Foundation and a Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So the Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect, as is the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. Um, small group in attendance, and we all know each other, so no welcome in the introduction. Well, welcome to everyone, but no introductions needed. Um, I didn't take this one off the list. and I, Oh, no, it's coming up. No, it's not. It's long over. So let me take that off. Uh, I don't have any announcements. I am going to be in Europe um, for EIC, Identity Week, and DICE in June. So those are all coming up. DICE is the IIW Europe um, event. Uh, so look forward to seeing folks there. OK, um, for the agenda, let's jump right to it. Um, Doc Here's a quick note for people watching the recording. I'll be at Adeniverse too, so be oh, okay. Oh, that's coming up as well. When is that? Uh, it's the last week of May. So okay. Next week, next Monday, I fly it out. Okay. The same time as Eurocrypt. Yeah. Is Eurocrypt's all next week too? It's probably not the same city. That's why. Adeniverse is Las Vegas. Yep. That's, oh. why, that's why Richard's going. <laughs> Miserable Las Vegas. The mounds outside of Las Vegas are definitely my kind of thing. But uh <laughs> gotta supplement your income. <laughs> yeah. I worked with a guy at BC Gov who did that. He was actually a professional ga professional gambler and would go down to Vegas for weeks at a time. All right. Um uh, agenda. We want uh, as I said, um did uh, a, a survey of a group of people. And so I want to go through those. I want to start with Richards. Um, do you want me to just share this screen or do you want to take over? Uh, you sharing is good. Okay. I'll just share the document. So I put a link in for the document that um, Richard shared and we can just go through that. Go ahead. Excellent. Um, so for the recording audience, uh, Mike and Mike and I, Stephen and Mike and I, we've been talking about what is the, uh, how does Docs anonymous credential format relate to Anon creds and the goals for Anon creds version two, and uh, we talked about the best way to do that is to really give some background on what Docs anonymous credentials format is, and so on the call is my is Lavesh uh, Hershandani who is our. A uh, crypto engineer, he also was one of the original authors of Anon Creds, and we we support. We've kind of, from a product perspective, we've we support two credential formats. We try to support. Well, we do support a W three C JSON LD JWT kind of format, and the goal there is to be maximally interoperable. And then we support an anonymous, what we call an anonymous credential format, where the goal is to be as privacy preserving as possible, and that's BBS. Uh, it's currently BBS, well, the, the, the SDK supports BBS Plus and BBS 2023. Right. And it uses a separate revocation scheme that's intended to be more privacy preserving and, and that kind of thing. Uh, so when we start talking about anonymous... Okay, so Lavesh is clarifying in chat that yeah. he wasn't the original author, but a contributor. I, I think he, more than a small contributor, Lavesh. But he, anyway, he, he's been yeah. around uh, this space in this area for a long time. Indeed. And and a lot of our goals with Docs Privacy Preserving Anonymous Credentials, we call them anonymous credentials, is is the same set of goals that that we that we had for Indiana on creds. And so at IW, when we we're talking about, you know, we have a challenge. Uh, we've really we're a small team. We've really been focused on uh, getting commercial adoption for our for our platform. We have not been as focused on interoperability or as focused on community collaboration. But now that we've got some customers, they're starting to ask us about interoperability and community collaboration. So we yeah. have a problem. How do we share, you know, participate with others and make sure we're on, you know, in the mainstream of privacy preserving credential formats? Uh, 
And I know that in Anon Creds, you know, it's been around for a while, but uh, we, we've had a hard time getting Anon Creds investment in the future and and what what their BBS approach would be. Mm -hmm. And so we saw, so there's a lot of overlap here. Yeah. So what we're looking for from Doc's perspective is first to, well, I should say, so we are a small team. We've got a couple engineers working on this. Mostly full-time is kind of their main thing, but they also are supporting the, the rest of the business in in our blockchain tier and in, you know, answering questions for our commercial stack and that kind of thing. Uh, but, but generally we have, you know, regular, we make regular investments, regular maintenance on our, uh, on our format. Yep. Um, we do have some external contributors. Uh, they aren't very many. Uh, Steven, I think you met most of them at IEW because there were a lot of people presenting on our, I was kind of surprised. It was my first time. Yeah. Yeah. I've been with Doc yeah. since August. And so it was kind of fun to go to IEW and say, Oh, look at all these people that know more about our stack than I do. Um, so the Z quorum team, uh, are the ones that probably contribute the most. And, uh, but, but we had, uh, it was funny, Mike, when you were talking about, uh, a couple of meetings ago about, uh, the, the IW session by, uh, the professor from Waseda university, uh, where they were benchmarking BBS and BBS plus uh, all that benchmarking was done with our, uh, with our SDK. So, mm -hmm. The yeah. numbers they got that you you said, why are the numbers like that? Well, I don't know why they're like that, but, but that is the numbers that came out of our SDK. So that's yeah. the way it works. Um, the, uh, so our goals for this uh, collaboration would be, you know, in an ideal world, uh, we all have the same goals around privacy preserving, you know, maximizing uh, the privacy nature of a product that can be adopted commercially and can be widely adopted, you know, a sustainable technology. Uh, so... The way, way the way I talk about that is that I, I use Brent Zendel's phrase. You know, the the technology should not betray the user's privacy. The user might choose to share information, but the technology should not do that for them. So, yeah. we definitely want to work with the community on on making sure we stay at the cutting edge of this, stay uh, ahead of risks and threats, uh, and we can't. You know, the last conversation that Stephen was really useful. I didn't know about. I knew about the IETF effort around BBS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I didn't know about the W3C one. Yeah. Uh, so just sharing that kind of expertise with, with the group learning from you. And also we can't be in all these meetings. So yep. how can we yep. make sure that somebody represents us yeah. in these organizations? That's why I was asking before we started the recording about uh, matters involvement, because I yeah. saw they were on the W3C <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, so being able to share some of that uh, and also, you know, just keeping our libraries up to date. Uh, Mike's already reported a bug against our, our, crypto SDK that was useful, something we hadn't caught. Nice. And, you know, that kind of benefit will be really valuable. Uh, we have collaborated with external people. Uh, we have had a few of our customers look at our at our libraries in some detail, but, you know, more eyes is a good thing, especially when we're talking about these kind of security sensitive technologies. So those are our goals. Mm -hmm. um, as for just what does the pr product do? Uh, so we have those two credential formats. So we have open ID, uh, and uh, open ID and the JSON LD stuff. We also have like privacy preserving using diff pre presentation exchange and didcom, and uh, and then we have the separate revocation for each of those. The one thing you'll notice as you look at the list is that when we talk about standards, it's mm -hmm. all fairly dated. Not it's not terribly dated, but like we did open ID six uh, a year yeah. ago. Draft six. Yeah. We did. Uh, I think if, they're up at 14 now or something or 20. Exactly. I can't even remember, but yeah. yeah. And there aren't a lot of changes, but there's some changes. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. you know, keeping current on these kind of things is always a, a struggle. Um, same with, uh, oh, we do support uh, ID, IDEN3COM for did Polygon. We have a partnership with Polygon. So yeah, uh, I, I forgot think... to ask Lavesh, is that in, is, is that in our credential library or is that in the, the, commercial tier or support for polygon uh, commercial tier. oh okay so that's not okay. in the open source stack so i should take that out of the document and that, that makes right? sense same okay. for uh same for the open id for uh verified, uh, verified presentations uh that's also and i did come measuring that's also closed source okay now. okay so those so, are the protocols you're using but the implementations are in the product which makes sense okay yeah. if people feel like we should structure things differently we're not against that like, it, i have to get approval from the team but yeah the the just question is just as much about you know what protocols you're interested in as 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 are open that 
I was more about the what you were doing with it if uh, in that. So okay, good. Okay, thank you for the correction, Lavesh. And, and then if you scroll down to the zkp fix features, so you're seeing crypto libraries. This this is yeah. Lavesh's expertise. Um, but um, my impression when I joined Doc was, wow, Lavesh does a little bit like everything. <laughs> so <laughs> it was. Um, I don't know, Mike, if you have questions about any of these specifically. What is Circom? No. Circom's like a ZK Lang type thing where you define your circuits and then they oh, compile. Okay. Yep. So the the way I describe it or God described to me is that sometimes uh you're you want to do a specific kind of ZKP request that the that the credential author didn't think about in advance. Mm -hmm. So how do you give the verifier a language by which they can do that? Yeah, in our use cases, that's like the one percent or even half a percent. It doesn't happen very often. Yeah, uh, but uh, I'll show you some examples of what kind of things at least uh, we support. Uh, and in those uh, those examples are all tests in the uh, in the rip, in the repository, so I'm not just making them up. Uh, they don't have to tickle. So some things like let's say you have uh, uh, yearly receipts, right? Payment receipt where you get like uh, it's a salary or something, and you want to prove that your annual salary is less than a certain amount. For you to get some social benefits without revealing your salary for each month, or uh, you want to prove that your assets are greater than liabilities, uh, where when your assets come from different credentials and liabilities also come from different credentials. So they're like not just two credentials, multiple credentials, right? So you want to add some things, subtract some things. These kind of things are possible through uh, CERCOM. Or you want to have like complex conditions that if this happens, then this happens, or if this condition is true, or that condition is true, or the bunch of these conditions are true, something like that. Uh, is also possible to serve them. So you'll, it's just more expressive than uh, these simple compar uh, equality and equality comparisons. Uh, you, when you have more uh, express, you need, when you need more expressive logic, then you go for circom. Okay. Yeah. Uh, verifiable encryption just serves a, a comment as well. Um, I think uh, the Oracle team, they gave a presentation at IW, they called it auditable encryption or auditable yeah. proofs. Is that correct, yeah. Lavesh? Yeah. That's uh, what we want them to use when we've talked to them in the past. They call it accountability. Oh yes, yeah. Account accountable encryption or accountable proof. So, um, it, our implementation is separate from theirs, but it's a similar idea. Yeah, there's no, implementation. The, they're using they're using right. Sorry, go they're, ahead using the, they're using the one that's in the, in this library, the one the code I already donated. Okay. Lit protocols using a slightly more advanced one. <laughs> that they're ready sorry my voice is low um they're they're using one that they're probably going to donate to a non-creds that i wrote so it's a much more expanded one and then but there's it's... and the only one that i see well the two that that aren't and they're kind of this they're based on the same uh well i don't know about that um set membership and revocation not being in the zkp list is that that's accurate, right? That is, uh, no, uh, so I didn't mention predicates, but in revocation, we do have. So set membership, uh, because you do it through accumulator, you can do uh, uh, set membership in R as well. Okay. You, you guys also support it through Z, uh, Z, Snarks, Lavesh, when I looked in your repo. Uh, Snarks, we can do, but there is a, a more efficient way to do it. If you just like, look, working with small sets, it's a, there's a more efficient way uh, it's basically a pairing based uh, set membership. So it's a signature based set membership. So that's uh, what you can do. Uh, but I have like a, a question regarding these. So I, when I looked in the non credits V2 repo, I see implementation of accumulators, but I don't see its integration in the uh, in the composite proof. So when you're creating proofs, uh, uh, the composite proof or compound proof, whatever you call it, and in the verify function, the verify function is empty for accumulators. Similarly, the verify function was empty for uh, verifiable encryption as well. So uh, do you plan to support it uh, in the it's near future? It's already in there, Lavesh. We're using it in production systems. The code that you that you see in there has all mm -hmm. of that already, and we're using it in production. So maybe you looked in the wrong place, but it's all there. Uh, I'm looking in the verify function, and that function is empty. It just returns OK. So I'm not sure. You uh, might be in the wrong folder. I don't have a computer in front of me. I'm on the phone. All right, I'll ask you. You'll have to look around. There's a verifier folder that might be where you need to look. 
Yeah, I'm looking at the verify folder and I'm looking at different predicates. So if okay. I look at verify encryption, I, I can ask in Discord also, but yeah, I'm looking at the verify yeah. folder and verify function empty. There's so also I'll... a bunch of tests with that. So it's there. Our clients are using it. Um, but are they using the uh, non creds V2 RS, Mike? Yep. Yes. Oh, okay. oh good. In fact, I need to update the README because it says there's a spot where it says this is not for production use. But oh. It is used in production, so I need to remove that. Okay. Okay. And a lot of the libraries that, or just some of the dependencies that non-creds uses have been audited by security companies. One of them I finally got transferred over. That's the Blissful right. library. The VSSRS is actually under audit. When that's done, that'll be transferred. So... I, I made a comment about this, but part of working in the open is we can now share common code and share audits, which reduces costs for both sides, for all people. Yeah. So there's a lot of duplicated effort going on, but I think by working with, and that's why, you know, we donated to a non-creds V2 was to reduce duplicated effort. Well, let's see what we can do to keep um aligning with that richard keep going signature schemes uh i don't know what to add this on signature schemes crypto yep. libraries um feel free to ask questions steve and, and mike and steven but the uh the crypto libraries one thing that was really i think is important to highlight is we're using arcworks for our math and so one of the questions i asked lavesh was you know how easy would it be to use some of mike's uh agora libraries and our with with our stuff but because the math primitives are different it makes it makes it much harder i'm not that different our works basically forked the rest crypto libraries and just added a few methods that's all that's all it is yeah but uh thing is we can't uh use the same code like as it is the code won't transfer that is like we have to either see it like agree on the initial generators and all that and then uh if you want to interact between these two, I have to serialize it and then uh, use it. Right? Yep. Yep. The reason I want to stick with mine is because it's been audited and ArcWorks, as far as I know, has not been. Interesting. Like, if you look at the Blissful Agora library, I included the audit report in that repo. Yeah, I saw the I saw that it uh, audit for Blissful. So that was the only audit report we found in the, in the libraries that I remember. We like I said, the others are still under audit. They're not done yet. And when they are, then I will transfer them. And they're all Kudelsky? No, one of them was in NCC. So I've been, a lot of it's being audited by three different parties. One is Trail of Bits, Kudelsky, and NCC. So yeah. I have so many audits going on right now, I can't keep track of them all. But hey. the point being, you, if you play with our libraries, then you get all those audits included because companies are using them and paying for the audits. So, and are the companies they're using in public? Uh, well, Lit is public, Cryptid's public, not publicly traded, if that's what you no, mean. But, but, no, no, but no. you can tell us who they are. Yeah. So, Crypt, yes. Lit and Cryptid are the two I knew about, but are there any others? Um, well, because I mean, they have clients that yeah. are using it too, but I can't divulge the clients. Yeah. That's useful. So, um, and then at the bottom, uh, we went through the revocation approach in some detail last in the last meeting. Uh, we can yeah. cover it more if people are interested, but I want to make sure we leave time for the other part of the discussion. Uh, but the last two links is uh, Lavesh. Uh, if you go to the bottom of the document, Stephen, okay. uh, Lavesh did an SSI meta presentation. It's a, uh, it's a very detailed conversation. It's a long video, but it's it covers our approach in quite a bit of detail. Excellent. And then, of course, Zcorum's presentation as well. Awesome. Zcorum, have I heard of them? That that was one. I got to look it up. Who who it is and who's involved? Um, I hadn't. That's not one that I reached out for and and tried to connect. And. Can you give just a brief summary of revocation? Like assuming it's not using LSR. No. Um, so um, it's used, it, we have three variations of meters. One is the VB accumulator, 
and then okay. uh, there are two variants of KB accumulators with VB. Uh, you have a membership and non-membership. For KB also, you have a membership and non-membership, but uh, the non-membership proofs are very ch cheap or the same uh, same cost as the membership proof because essentially uh, KB universal accumulator is a combination of two VB universal accumulators, right? You have one for membership, one for non-membership, and you have a trade-off that you have to decide the, the possible elements before, which is uh, we do it anyway. Uh, and the KB positive accumulator is that the accumulator only gets updated when you uh, remove elements from it. So one that Alosor uh, proposes uh, in a single server server setting also that uh, the accumulator only gets updated once the uh, once elements are removed, not on addition. So that's what KB positive is. Uh, and then we support the keyed version of that. So for some use cases, we require that uh, credentials be verifiable only by the people who issued them. So we support to uh, we support on the credential level also a scheme called BDT16 that supports this kind of verification where only the issue can verify it and there's like more re like one more reason to do it uh, but yeah that's the thing and for our also we support this keyed verification where uh, yeah the, the revocation manager can uh, only he can verify it regarding how the updates happen uh, there are two ways to do it one is just like uh, you go to the issuer get the uh, update witness but that that uh, the new witness, but that's sacrifice uh, that compromises the privacy. The other is uh, you can get the updates in the blockchain. So updates are blockchain and put in such that there are two uh, kinds of storage in the blockchain. So if you're familiar with Ethereum, you have this uh, contract state and then you have call data that the blocks. So similarly, we have on substrate where we put the most recent activity in the, in the uh, state and other data like updates, like which elements got added, which got removed, they go in the call data in the blocks. So that's like much cheaper compared to storing everything in the block. Okay. Then you have events. So the same, basically you follow the same uh, workflow that you uh, interact with, you follow when you interact with Ethereum smart contracts and how you get different data from uh, like data using indexed events. So uh, that's uh, how it happens. And uh, if you want to update the witness, then you can download this uh, witness data uh, from blockchain. Okay and then uh, create the big witness. Just so you know, the VB accumulated non-memberships are broke, are basically broken. Uh, we don't use non-membership, but uh, again, I would like to understand how they are broken. And I've had a question in Discord as well. Last call, you made a comment. Yeah, that last call, we, we talked about that. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I Not have a question. I, I made a comment in Discord as oh, well. Okay. Yeah, it's the Alosar paper specifically says that if you have this batch update information, you can learn the witness and accumulator member pair. It doesn't say about the secret key. So I'm still, I still want to understand how. There's a neat print paper in 2020 by Giuseppe Vito and Alexander Barukov, who is mm -hmm. Dimitri's advisor. It's five something. I don't have the number exactly in front of me. That's where the paper is. They basically say if uh, there's enough batch information for non membership witnesses like, 10 out of a billion, then you can get the key. You just uh, have to get not enough non-membership witnesses and and some batch information. It's, it's a pretty low number, then you can get it. I'll try to find it, but it's the year is 2020. The number is five something. I don't remember exactly the number. These are the same authors who did the VB20. Same authors. Yeah. So same I'm, authors, Giuseppe Vito I'm, and Alexander Brukov. So Yeah, but... I'm not, see, like, I'm not sure why would they uh, first uh, show that it's broken and then just in a subsequent paper publish this. When you uh, ask them, they basically said when they were doing the update, the paper that's in 777, mm -hmm. they discovered that other one and were able to publish it quicker. That's all. Okay, so you're saying on ePrint in 2020, there's a paper by these two and that says that if you have enough fitness data, up with some day data, you can learn the secret key, right? Yes. Okay. All right, I'll check that on the team on Slack in uh, okay. Discord. Um, I'm going to switch to this. So I did a bit of a survey of, of various others asking essentially the same questions. I got emails back with good answers. So I'm just going to summarize through. So we've gone through dot networks, um, Hyperledger, non-creds V2. Um, there's answers directly to your questions earlier, Richard, um, particularly about backwards compatibility in there. And then in between um, Digital Bazaar et al., which is the VCDI BBS work. Um, 
Richard the Waseda uh, International Initiative Japan and Waseda University work, um, Portage, which is um, where Andrew Whitehead works, Oracle Labs, and then um, the work we're doing. So this is why I'd like to probably get, um, um, yeah, Z, Z Corum as well. Um, one of the things I probably didn't ask, but I think most of them covered was what specs they were working on and, and what collaborative spec efforts were going on. As I know, um, the Internet Initiative Japan group is also Doc Labs library. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is based on Doc Labs, and it says that in here. Okay. Um, so, Digital Bazaar, um, that was Manu, and Greg Bernstein is leading most of the work or leading the work there. Um, he is, as far as I know, he's not with Digital Bazaar. He's, his email is a different company, but um, is very much connected with um, Manu and the work they do. Um, so communities where they're working, the W3C VC uh, group, um, the DIFF crypto group, um, applied crypto group, I believe it's called, and then the IETF CFRG. And the IETF CFRG is important because that's where BBS Plus is actively going through, uh, or BBS is going through. So that's a, a pretty important one. That's where Matter spends most of the time. I did not reach out to, I think it's Vasiliev. Um, I'm not sure of that name. Um from Matter, who's taking it over from Tobias um, and leading the effort um, uh, over at IETF for them. Um, enhanced privacy everywhere. I was hoping to get a little more goals on what they were trying to do. Um, Manu recently did a um, CCG presentation on parallel signatures, and that's really where they're looking to apply it, which is you construct a JSON LD um, verifiable credential. So use the VCDM, um, you use the, um, uh, you know, the W3C VCDI BBS as one of the signatures, you used a, you use a NIST um, data integrity proof or crypto suite a, as a parallel signature, as a second signature on the same data um, from the same issuer so the issuer basically owns both keys and then um, you present you provide that to the holder so they can um they can present either uh version of it uh you can can present using either of the keys uh in a privacy preserving way or a non-privacy preserving way um uh, mike what is ecdsa dash sd um, ECDSA SD is a, um, a selective disclosure. I mean, it's basically from what I understand quite similar. Uh, no, it's not. It's an ECDA signature where they sign each message and then they provide a way in presenting it that you can present only some of the messages. So no other features other than you get selective disclosure. Um, so nothing on pro pro protocols, credential format is, as I say, VCDI. So W3C VCDM with a, a crypto suite that is specifically BBS. Um, again, no presentation request format. Um, the big ones they're doing are, um, in addition to selective disclosure and unlinkability, um, blind signatures. So that's the enabling link secret. So holder binding um, per verifier linkability. So pseudonyms. And they do that in two ways. One where the issuer provides the um, the value and a second where it's just a value provided by the holder. Um, so a note, nothing, those are the only ones. So if you look at the VCDI BBS spec, it references those as additional features. Um, interested in post quantum, um, is this, uh, Mike, when he talks about a recent publication based on lattices, is that the PS, um, post quantum work? Probably. Yeah, I would uh, kind of thought. I'm working with Oliver Sanders on trying to get that uh, standardized. 
but he said that um, he's fine doing the pairing based one as a standard, but the post quantum, he says like, it's a little impractical right now. Mm -hmm. Like the secret keys are nine megabytes. The private or the public keys are eight megabytes. And he thinks they can get it smaller. So mm -hmm. he wants to wait to standardize the PQ version. Um, once the, that's gone down. Nice. Um, and I'm working PQ version of Allosaur. Yeah. So. This is definitely where we want to get um, Greg and others involved with him aware of the other libraries. And this seems to be a, a way that we could um, try to reduce the number of efforts on things. Uh, are you familiar with these libraries? I assume folks are. Blissful, Blissful Raps Blast and a pure Rust version. Okay. So it, I've also optimized both of those. Okay. So if you need Blast, it's it, in fact, that's the default I use, but I also make it a common interface. So you can switch between Blast and the C, or the pure Rust version. Okay. All right. Um, this was Dan Yamamoto, who I think most of you know, or certainly if you've gone to IAW, um so um he's largely working i think more or less in a in a small community in japan with um uh kazu um inspired by the ldp vvs 2020 um so again mostly academic and research field for future standardization um Again, sort of a a, a broad-based goal. Um, protocols of interest, VCI, v, uh, VP, and, and PEC. So this is their first reference to DIFF presentation exchange, I think. I think, um, Richard, your commercial product might have that. Um, I can't quite see that because I've got yes. things in the way. Yes, uh, it is. Yeah. JSON-LD. Um, so again, they're doing it similar. And, and I should point out um, both Greg's work and this work is based on canonicalization in the same way that the ECDSA canonicalization is done. And then they are just um, using a, a BBS signature on it. So again, taking the whole context and converting it into um, quads, I believe. And then there's signatures on the data element of the quad is what I understand. Um, first reference here to JWP, which again is a, um, a, a JW family, um, but enabling the use of selective disclosure and, and those types of things. Um, again, presentation request not decided, but diff packs is likely. Um, here's our list. I uh, should have formatted this better, but anyway, selective disclosure, unlinkable, proof of quality of hidden attributes. So that's the claim. Um, Richard, you mentioned that in the doc presentation earlier. And again, because they're using doc, this list is, is exactly what you would expect. Um, so private key binding, um, pairwise pseudonymous identifier. So again, that um, directed identifier domain proof. Uh, multiple names for it. Um, same thing that Greg had. So Greg's list was this one, obviously selective, unlinkable, private key binding, and the pseudonymous identifier. Um, here we've got more. We've got the range proof and general predicate proofs using ZK Snarks. This is what um, Dan demonstrated at IAW or, or went through. Signature schemes, BBS plus, wanting to move to BBS, presumably dependent on uh, the work Doc's doing it to enable that. Um, using the Doc library. Um, and again, RDF, uh, RDF based, and then nothing yet on revocation. So that's where they are. Um, Portage. Pretty similar to um, what Greg said, uh, mostly at DIFF with the Applied Crypto Group. Uh, Andrew has definitely been helping with the IETF work and um, getting that moved forward. 
Um, what they wanted, what he wants to do, or they want to do is a similar and on creds type layer on top to make it easy for everyone to use these things. Um, JWT format or, or CBOR. Um, uh, and, and then not that interested in VCDI, which I thought was interesting. Um, one of the things that wasn't quite clear from the parallel signatures talk that um uh that manu did was this question of whether you can do parallel signatures or not with jwt um he seemed to think you could not then somebody followed up on the mailing list saying you could so i don't know that's kind of interesting obviously with um with the W3C VCDM format, it's very simple. The VCDI format, it's very simple to add parallel signatures. So um, again, no progress on presentation request. Um, interesting combination here, blind signatures, unlinkable signatures and range proofs. So um, I thought that was interesting. Um, did not, uh, presumably selective disclosures there, so I'll assume that's there, but didn't include the um, pseudonym, uh, pseudonyms, um, which I think are are extremely important. Um, signature schemes, I, I don't know why I put that, but that's clearly BBS. Um, referencing doc again in that. Um, Andrew is the one who did the ZK SAM, which sort of, looks super interesting but didn't go anywhere because there's no one um, academic to look at it and, and go through it um he's been looking further at it um looking what at is, it oh, sorry what is zk sam zk sam is one that andrew whitehead um came up with a few years ago and, and it uses super interesting data minimization techniques um, such just that, using BBS signature for revocation, Lavesh. No, so not that simple. First. I mean, it's not that simple because it it uh, from a deployment perspective, it allows you to publish in a very concise way the entire state of every credential. So, um, for a million credentials, um, the size of the state is at worst 153 kilobytes. So you get a reasonable sized um, state, uh, somewhat larger, but not massively larger than the, um, bit, um, you know, than a compressed bit array. Um, so you get some nice attributes there because you don't have to go back to the issue where you just have to get access to this 153 by kilobyte byte file to have the entire set of information necessary to produce a proof. So that's yeah, why it's, it's using a combination of like BBS and an accumulator to yeah. handle it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's one I'd love to see pursued, but I, I just don't, <laughs> have not been able to figure out how to get anyone, inter you know, a cryptographer interested in it. Andrew's a, <clears throat> a, I don't know what, does not have, the academic creds to produce a paper or that, um, but it looks like a super interesting scheme. So finally, the Oracle Labs, um, they're looking at, the way they're looking at it is to provide an abstraction layer on top of these and decouple the formats and policy decisions from the underlying so that um, you can use the various features in different ways. So it sounds quite similar to the goal of an on-creds. Um, basically being able to plug in the different libraries. Now, what's interesting and what I don't quite get, and you know, we've had various discussions with um, um, uh, Mark uh, about this is uh, the, you know, how, since an on creds two, I, I guess the the libraries that exist today, the on creds two library is a is a relatively low level one. It's not quite as high level as as an on creds one, and so I guess that's why they plug it in. 
as it is today. But the idea is to put a layer on top of it that enables the same things that um, um, the folks at Oracle Labs are, tr are trying to build out, Harold and, and, and Mark. Um, decoupling the credential formats um, from the underlying libraries, um, facilitating expression of proof requirements, um, and, and being able to reply to those. Um, tests that can be written and run against the underlying library and and enable the continuing um, evolution of the libraries. Um, protocols are out of scope, um, but presentation request format is. Um, so, well, we're agnostic to it, but the goal is to abstract that so that multiple presentation request formats can target it. So, the idea there being if diff, be, you know, you you take a diff presentation format and then you generate it into the agnostic uh, presentation request format that's handled by the library. Um, credential format, the same thing, agnostic, and make it so that you can generate them um, in that way. That's a harder one to say because, for example, if you use W3C and your goal is to use a an RDF, um, abstraction that you have to have that RDF format first. So um, tricky on that one, I think. CKP features are generally the same. Again, these guys use doc. So um, the same list that that um, Richard provided earlier, signature scheme, again, um, BBS plus or BBS uh, via doc network crypto and then PS via non creds V2. Um, VB positive accumulators, but are interesting at looking at others. So that's again based on presumably um, Labesh, the work you've done in um, in the dot network crypto. Um, so looking at different ways of of doing that. And finally, um, I put this summary in just to summarize what we've got. Um, so a new version of an on-creds that provides a path from an on-creds, but okay to break compatibility. <laughs> um, so perhaps just in name that it's an on-creds, um, but what I'm really looking for is the, um, um, you know, and, and on-creds too, as it stands today, has the same interactions. They're just implemented in a different way. So the interactions remain roughly the same. And so that's the uh, way. Definitely want alignment with W3C VCDM. And we think um, parallel signatures is pretty crucial. Scalable revocation is very high and practical unlinkability. And I put those in that specific order. The practical unlinkability, the very key one there is the pseudonymous um, identifiers. That one's absolutely crucial, um, we think. Allowing you to share, for instance, here's my driver's license number in a in a um, unlinkable way, but it's um, derived from it. Um, but but allows a um, each verifier to get a repeatable value, even though they don't know the actual value. Um, Didcom credential exchange, um, but totally open to open ID for VCs. So um, the groups mainly are based on that use this are based on Didcom and want to have that. Um, relationship, trusted relationship capability. Um, but um, open ID, if, if that's the way to go. VCDM and then um, VCDM with JWT, if that is practical, and I should have added four parallel signatures. Again, we think the key to, absolute key to using this is parallel signatures, because then you can meet the use cases of both NIST-based and other. Um, so I think that's crucial. Um, we're assuming diff presentation exchange format. Again, um, features are listed in the order we think are, um, I think, are, are most important from a business perspective. Um, so I put those in. Um, sort of these first, first um, set here are the things in and on creds one. So they come first. Um, domain uh, pseudonyms being the next, um, range proof, of course, being part of an on creds one, but uh, the predicates, claim equality, verifiable encryption, and set membership. 
um, Library C Angora and Allosaur. So that covers that overall piece. Um, what I'd like to do with this is get keep in contact with all of the people I talk to. I'd like to ask add um, C Corum. Is that who they are? Um, add add them to the um, to the list um, that we're contacting and um, sort of follow up with them as well. Any comments or from that list? I have a question uh, on the previous slide. So it said Alistair, but Alistair isn't in the norm because we do right now, right? It's not implemented. It's uh, sure it's, it is. Which library again? In Onpress V2? Yes, it is. It's single server, but it's in there. You bet. Uh, okay, that's uh, fine. Thanks. I was, yeah, I was running the multi user. Anyway, all right, uh, Mike, uh, just, uh, yeah, nothing on this slide or uh, anything, but Mike, you, the paper you mentioned is about um, using the non membership witness to get the secret key. Uh, initially, you were talking about getting the, using the, witness update data to get the secret key so now basically you made two points right you're saying talk talk to zam shock who zam shock is my co-author on allosaur sam jock i can oh. he's at the university of waterloo he knows more about accumulators than anyone that i've ever met um uh, yeah he's okay, the one yeah. that basically said set memberships are basically just weak and broken just don't even use them uh, uh, this is the third thing, site membership. I'm asking about specifically about accumulators, the VB20 accumulators. So there you made two points. One is if you have set membership, uh, non-membership witnesses, right. you can break the secret key. The other claim- Oliver, or Lavesh, uh, let's talk over Discord. I've got your okay. handle. Let's not take up this meeting with Crypto Talk. That's not, that's, that's not the place. I thought this meeting was for Crypto Talk. <laughs> okay. No. That's no, you're talking too too low level. We can talk particular methods, but if you want to go deep into how they're broken, I suggest you and I talk about it. And then we tell those group the results because you and I could probably go on for hours. We we can, it is a place to talk about that, but it's, we'd want to set up. We only um, have five minutes left. <laughs> yeah, we only have a couple of minutes left. So, um, okay, Lesh. Sam Jacques is the one I'd want to get to this meeting. Because he has all the details on that. Okay. Because when we were authoring Allosaur, he said, we don't want to do set, set non-membership. And I said, oh, why is that? Because of the witness attack. And he said that and some recent vulnerabilities. He said, it basically makes them broken. We don't want to do that. So. So Sam um, is a uh, Canadian, went to Oxford for his PhD and is now back at the University of Waterloo in Canada, which because I'm an alumni is the best university ever and i was there two days ago i should have stopped by yeah he's presenting alice he may not be there i think he's presenting alice or oh wait no that's not till june okay he's he's presenting it in singapore there so. you go. okay um what i'm going to do is is connect back with the others and see if we can get um see how we can try to optimize the work. Um, as I say, what we're trying to get to is, you know, it sounds like we're, we're very similar on, on where um, the canonicalization is different and that's probably the most fundamental difference I saw. Revocation is an open question. So definitely need to look at that. And then seeing if we can align on the libraries with with keeping audits in mind as a as a way to do it. So those are powerful. Now, Blissful, you said it's got its audit in there, right? And then you've got other ones that are coming. Mike? Yes. Yeah. Which, Gennaro you know, will be added. VSSS-RS will be added. Both of them. Okay. Um, and then I will... Um, I already have a repo for it in Agora. There's yeah. one called yeah. Key Share Proofs. That that'll be another cool one. I'm working with three other cryptographers, including Hart Montgomery, on a cool way to handle key recovery or, or proving you still possess a share of a key. This is audit in progress. And is it 
No, the Gennaro one's already, the audit for that's already done. I'm just trying to get, because I'm not the only contributor, right? You have to get all the contributors to agree that, that they're okay to move it. So I'm waiting to hear back from one person. Via The verifiable secret sharing library is under audit. So. The verifiable feature? Verifiable secret sharing, yeah. There is another one in Agora called Key Share Proofs that I'm working on. Um, once that paper is published, then the code will be, well, the code's like half written, but you can take a look at that one. Hey, Mike, um, you oh. say the audit is com um, complete. Who's who's doing the audit? Uh, for the VSS one, I think it's Kodolsky, if I remember right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, Mike, have you are you working on or made any progress on getting BBS support into an OnCreds B2 into the library? I don't think it's there, right? No, I've started, but I have so many things on my plate. <laughs> okay. Um, we Most are... of my focus has been on the key share proofs with Hart and some others, and then the lightning fast ECDSA, that's T of N. So. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'll I'll be following up on this um, reminder that um, so thanks all for contributing to that, and I will, as I say, be following up with the different groups to try to see where we've got commonality and sort of as so far I've just gone through all of those results and sort of organized them. Now I want to sort of combine them together to see where we can um, line things up. Um, Reminder of new meeting time. So second Monday of each month is at this time. Fourth Monday of each month is in the afternoon so that we can get um, Auckland included, um, except this month. Um, we thought we were gonna shift, but because of the uh, US Memorial Day holiday, this meeting occurred on the third Monday, just for fun. Um, I have this question about using a bloom filter, but I, I don't think I need this answered here. Anyone here familiar with bloom filters? Yeah. What about them? Um, so if I have a million high entropy hashes and I want to know is, ha is a given hash in the set, yes or no, that's the only question I want to answer. Is it in or not? Is a bloom filter the way to go? Uh, yes, but it's not anonymous. No, I don't care about anonymous. All I care yeah, about so, is so, hash so bloom filters are used all over the place, right? Especially in networking. Yeah. They're they're great for saying is it in the set, but you can also get a false positive that yeah. says it is in the set when it's not. Yeah. You can't get yeah. false negatives. So if it's yeah. definitely not in the set, then you have to go look up something else. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so a common practice is make the bloom filter set size twice what you actually need, and then you'll yeah, never yeah, get a false exactly. positive. Yeah. And you just reduce the lower. Okay, we don't so have to we up on that. Uh, in the form of a Zor filter. A Zor filter? Like XOR, XOR. Oh, yeah, XOR filter. That's probably the fastest version I use when it comes to cryptography. Okay. There's other ways you can do it, but that's the one I like because it's the most compact and easy to use. All right, I'll take a look. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I think that wraps up. We're at time. Thanks all for participating. Thanks to all who answered those questions. And um, as I say, I'll be following up on that to uh, see what else I can come up with. Talk to you in a couple of weeks from- Sounds good, thanks, Stephen. All right, thanks all, bye.